making this place I stand. Holy ground, holy ground. Thank you, and what a beautiful way to start our morning together. So good morning. Uh, what a beautiful one. It is. Uh, welcome to Living Water. My name is Pete Kolpak, and I'll be your worship leader this morning. Uh, we are a family church, and certainly all are welcome here. Please feel free to grab a coffee cup at any point in time and make yourself feel at home. Uh, bathrooms are located down the hallway um, to my right. The tot spot, if we have any tots here, are certainly over there by uh, Dickie. Uh, the cry room is, or any of the offices here are going to be available for cry rooms. Um, if we were to need that. And uh, if you are a guest today, please feel free to sign in um, in the back. We'll make sure that somebody from Living Water gets in contact with you. And then also we've been asked to point out our exits. So other than our main exit, um, we have an exit to your right, to your left, and then also back by the bathrooms. So lastly, it's time to lift up our burdens, ask for forgiveness for our sins, and pray for thankfulness for all that we have and with that, you are welcome here. So I'll ask Mark Palma to come up and start with our missions. Good morning, everyone. Well, they say whenever two or more have gathered in God's name, you have church. I think we just made it. Uh, <laughs> Thank you all the regulars who come, no matter what, no matter how beautiful the day is, no matter how sunburned you are, no matter how much you have things to deal with because you had relatives all week and they've left your house a mess. Thank you for being here today. Um, we have a couple announcements. Could I have the first slide, please? I'm clicker impaired. <laughs> Ned is gone, so we're not paying him this month, just so you understand how this works. So we will have the finance committee make sure we make the appropriate adjustments, so don't worry. So whatever money you put in the collection plate will go for all the other needs of the church. Next slide, please. All seriousness, we wish him well, and I don't think we always think about the pressures we put on a pastor. It's nice for them to get away every once in a while. We need to do that. Uh, there is a uh, clipboard floating around here for uh, VBS. Uh, VBS is nearing very quickly. There are some last-minute supplies they could use. But besides the supplies, I want you to just think about that week. If there's something you can do to help out, please do it. Uh, I'm sure they could use a little extra help just with the logistics of everything they're going to be addressing. But this is a huge uh, ordeal for our church. So. Uh, there's an awful lot of work that goes into this, and thank you for everyone who does that. Next slide. And then here we go. We have, uh, this is upon us. Um, next slide, please. Uh, Mark Lieber here is going to step up here for a minute and uh, twist anyone's arm who does not have plans for the 20th through the 26th. Clipboard's probably in the back. We'll get it passed around. Last week, the sign up for the Buffalo trip. Um, you have to be registered by the 14th of July. We're leaving again the 21st, really early in the morning. I um, haven't set an exact time yet, but it's going to be in the four-ish neighborhood because we've got a long drive to get out there that day. But we'll, we'll get something passed around, and then we'll be contacting everybody in the next week or so about uh, final details on driving. So that's all I got. Looking good. They got uh, weather out in Buffalo is about the same as here, upper 70s, low 80s, and it's going to be fun. 130 houses they're going to fix up. Last I heard, and they've got volunteers coming from 25 states. So it should be crazy. Thank you, Mark. You can just stand that slide for a second. Uh, another thing to remind you of is on July 20th, between 2 in the afternoon and 6 p.m., you're welcome to come to Shannon's, my home. Uh, we're having a little get-together to say goodbye to Brian and Connie as they move on to their next journey in life. So there's an open house at our house that afternoon. You do not need to bring anything but a smile. I may bring the mission jar, though, so if you have any money that you just have burning a hole in your pocket or you feel guilty because you didn't bring a gift, 
okay, decide, don't bring gifts, don't bring cards. They are so sick and tired of packing and moving, they don't want anything else to bring. But maybe the mission jar will show up, you never know. Next slide. Um, during the summer, we have the yellow room available as a place for kids to go during church. So uh, that's what's going on this summer. Next slide, please. And then, okay, I mentioned this last time too. Remember, in June, we love our children. In July, we send them to BBS. In August, we send them to Camp Noah. In September, we're glad we paid our property taxes. We can send them back to school. So uh, <laughs> it, 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 there's another camp, uh, the 5th through the 9th of August. Uh, here's the information for it. Uh, you know, and these are great opportunities for kids too for some socialization. I think they sometimes get tired of parents and grandparents too. Next slide. Um, Lindsay talked to us about this before. If you have any pop tabs, just throw them in the red jar in the back and they will magically go to Ronald McDonald House. Uh, Lindsay's talked to us many times about Ronald McDonald House. It's one of the many ways that we as a church just try to help out in the broader community around us. Um, you know, we have the words on the back that say serving others through Christ. It's easy to put the words up there. Actually, it wasn't easy. Shannon and I did it and it's not a good husband and wife kind of project, but it worked out okay. We're still married after. Uh, but, but all kind of side, lots of churches say, oh, well, you know, we do things. Well, you know, this church actually does do things, and it's because of you. So this is one of the little things we're doing. Next slide, please. And uh, any group announcements for the day? Yeah, I've got to actually have a couple things that we're looking at doing. First off, um, we have for the trip to Buffalo as we shuffle off to Buffalo. Um, we have a uh, fermented beverage coming next week. And if you are willing to make a donation um, on that, they'll be in the back. And all the money that we make off that fermented uh, stuff that we make um, is going to pay for, help pay for gas, other things that we might need for the trip heading out. Secondly, Sandy's uh, shed needs to be taken care of. And what I'd like to do is tomorrow, about, say, 10.30ish, uh, meet anybody that's able to meet me here. We'll go out to Sandy Shed, take a look, get some things going on that, and then maybe again on Tuesday. And then definitely Wednesday, we'll meet as a group, Fermenting Faith group on Wednesday. Um, but if we can be here tomorrow, let's say 10.30, I've got a couple guys that want to go out and help us get that going. Maybe we can do it in a day and a half. Who knows? We'll, uh, we'll go out and do as much as we can, and then we'll go from there. But Sandy needs it. Um, head out to Barron. When you hit uh, 25, head north. First road to the right. Am I correct, Sandy? All right. That's what I've got. Thank you. And anybody else have any other announcements as far as things going on? Okay. All right, our message today is going to be led by Brian, and that's going to be on Jonah, the reluctant prophet. All right, and I'll ask to call everybody to worship. Uh, please join along with me in the bowl. Sing praises to our Lord. Sing praises to our Lord, faithful children of God. Sing praises to our Lord, faithful children of God, give thanks to God's holy name. Please rise if you're able. First song.
now have our confession of sin. Unlike ours, God's anger does not last, but God's favor, God's grace, and God's forgiveness are for us, not just in this moment, but forever. How can we not want to confess to such a one who is ready to heal us? Please join me as we pray, saying... Why is it that we can Sing praises to our God, faithful children. God has heard our prayers and made us whole. We will not.
I invite you to share God's peace with your neighbors. And if you happen to encounter someone you don't know and are feeling courageous, courageous enough, please make sure to welcome them here. If I could ask our ushers to come forward, uh, it is offering time. There are so many ways to give, whether it's your time, talents, or financial gifts. At Living Waters, one of the many ways um, that we can give is we have offering baskets. We have the text to give option. We have the Living Waters app. And uh, if you would like to, we have a kiosk in the back where you can enter your information um, right now. Thank you.
We'll now have our prayer of the day. Lord God, author and giver of all good things, grant our hearts the love of your name. There is in us the good will, and us to the good end. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we believe in the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Kids. I'm so excited. Good morning. Good morning. Come on and sit down right here so I can see all your bright and shiny faces. Oh, my goodness. I think so. You want to tell me about that? We're getting them. Come on. Where is it? There they are. Here they come. Yeah, even you big guys. Come on. Yeah, I see you back there. Come on, Miles. Yeah, you think I don't notice. morning. How are you guys? Are you good? Are you having summer? Finally? What are you doing? What have you done? What have you done this fun this summer so far? Oh, Quinn. What is this? Husky. A husky. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? He makes me sweat just looking at him. <laughs> He's got a fur coat on, doesn't he? Do we wear fur coats in the summer? We do? He says yes. He says yes. You know what makes, you know what's really cool about these? It does make me feel warm. Do you feel warm when you see somebody like this that's like warm? Is this a very special friend for you? Is it? Can you tell, does he have a name? What's his name? Um, Max. Max. Why is it Max? Um, cause. Just cause, just cause. So this is Max the Husky. And he is very warm. <laughs> um, so I bet I can tell you something else that makes us warm. Do you know what else makes us warm? The love of God. The love of God, does it make you warm? When you're uncomfortable. We talked, we talked last, last week, I talked about thunderstorms and the big noise it makes. And Sometimes when things are not so good, we need to feel warm. And you know how we feel warm? We can think of Jesus' love. Can you do that? Do you think that works? Right? And Max, does Max give you lots of love? Yeah, I love it. Yes, absolutely. How many of you have special friends like Max? I bet every single one of you do, don't you? Yes. And one of the things that's important to remember about our special friends is they are gifts from God, and they are made to make our hearts warm. So even when, even when it's really hot out, sometimes we just need a little warmth in our hearts. So we'll think about this week and see if you can share your special friend with another friend if they need a little warmth in their heart. Sound good? Awesome, awesome. Can we pray? All right, fold your hands. Ready? Dear Jesus, nice loud voices, he'll hear you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. With all your heart. With all your heart. Thank you for giving us warmth. Thank you for giving us warmth. In our hearts. In our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, welcome to living. Wow. 
Hello. Okay, a little better. Down, 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 down. I brought my big voice today. How's that? Okay. Welcome to Living Water, everyone, and welcome to everyone online. Um, I'm part of our journey through the book of Jonah. Um, again, like Pete says, uh, there's exits, there's bathrooms, there's coffee. This is our living room. This is our time to talk about Jonah. When I say Jonah, you say Will. Jonah. Will. Jonah. Will. Now we're kicking it. Okay, that's what we're talking. So we've got a whale of a tail to talk about today. Um, and I'm happy to, to grab onto this one. This is kind of the fun part of Jonah. The other parts that Dave introduced us was historic, and that was kind of fun to hear about the history of how the prophets were and what his calling was. Bambi gave us a cool uh, story about sailors and, you know, not feeling so right about raising your hand, saying it's me, and then saying it's me, and having that little drawer. And now I know Jonah's filled his pants with stuff now, and so he's getting kicked off of the kicked off of the boat, and so now we're ready for the next, uh, the next part of this Jonah theme. And I'd like to think about Jonah as uh, dot, or at help.com, you know, he was, he was really in a, in a pickle when he came to this. It's interesting to note that uh, when we think about books of the Bible, how did they get in there? You know, is it because someone did something spectacular or regal, um, outlandish, crazy, humorous, humbling, simple, complex, twisted, or adventurous. Well, certainly Jonah had a little bit of all these characters going on with him. Um, and I like to think about Jonah as probably us at times when we're running from God and we, we kind of think that we don't need to do what God is willing for us to do. So we turn around and we go the other way. Um, I think that this part of the story again, kind of drives a few things home. When Connie and I were talking about the Jonah part, and we we're saying, a whale, nah, that just doesn't happen, folks. Maybe the whale was a time in your life when you had depression, or when you were down and out, or in the pits. And certainly we can look at that metaphor and think about the whale as being in our pits. But I think that there's a little more to the story, and we'll get to that. The first part of this is the last portion of chapter 1 where the Lord provided the huge fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in its belly for three days and three nights. Does that ring a bell to anybody? I think that when we think about Jonah and the story of Jonah there are some neat parallels that I'm going to be bringing in here with the life of Christ and so we'll get to those. Matthew for example was talking about Jesus when he was talking to the Pharisees, and he was arguing with them. And he actually brought into the argument Jonah. So he said, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, predicting his crucifixion and resurrection. Once Jonah was in the pit, it got to be a little nasty. I can't imagine what it would be like. No lights, slimy, cold, wet, time to repent. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord as God. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the deep realm of the dead, I called for help. And you listened to my cry. We can touch base with God. When he's uh, there for us, he provided the fish. He didn't, he didn't abandon Jonah. He doesn't abandon us. He provides for us. Even when we think we're in the pit, God is still there providing for us, helping us along the way. It's hard to believe that he is with us even in the depths of our misery, even in the depths of our sorrows, when we've lost people, when we've lost our, our challenges that we want to meet. God's still there. He's there. He's helping us. And we can reflect on that. We can cry out to him for the help, as Jonah did. Jonah says, You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the sea, and the current swirled about me. He said, I've been banished from your sight, yet I'll look towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, and the deep surrounded me. This was an interesting one. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. 
Okay, to the root of the mountains I sank down, the earth below barred me forever. But you, Lord, my God, brought me life up from the pit. This seaweed thing is kind of an interesting reflection, too, because when you think about it, this is a shaming. God was saying, Jonah, I didn't like where you were going with all this. You kind of were driving the car the wrong direction. Here, I'm going to give you this seaweed wrap around your head. What does that remind us of? In Matthew, when they were persecuting Jesus, they said they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. That was a shaming. So we have a parallel here. And I think the story is pretty cool because Jesus reflected Jonah in his talk with the Pharisees. And we see these parallels coming together. Maybe I'm stretching it a little bit, but I like stretching things. <laughs> and then Jonah says, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Man, does it take something disastrous for us to praise God? Does it take something disastrous for us to, to say, God, I can't do this alone. You know, help me out, help me out. And so Jonah was reflecting on this, and he was, in through this chapter too, it's interesting because he starts at the very pit of things, and he starts repenting, and he's saying, okay, now I'm about to turn the corner, God, here I am. And so it's like that conversation that we always like to think we can have with God, and Jonah was having that with God. And so here he says, my life was ebbing away, and I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you. I hope that we can live our lives without having to have the, the pits bring us to Christ. I hope that we can have Christ in our lives when we're having the good times too. And I think that's an important thing that uh, Jonah was reflecting at this point. He just said, you know, I realize that I'm in the dumps now. And so now I'm turning to you, Lord. Help me out. And the story will go on. You guys will hear about that. But he was kind of sitting there mulling around and things like that. Um, life, wasn't, life wasn't good, and how did he know that he was going to be saved? I don't know. He doesn't know. In the belly of a whale, nobody knows. But then he started talking with God, and he said, you know, those who cling to the worthless idols turn away from God's love from them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you so he's repenting. He's going on and he's saying, God, I understand why I'm here now. I'm here because you're kind of smacking me up with seaweed and stuff like that. And I need to turn. I need to turn my faith back to you and to trust you and to say, yes, Lord, I see what my mission is. And then he says, what I vowed I'll make good. I'll say salvation comes from the Lord. And he knows this is what he's going to be proclaiming in Nineveh. At that point, God gets his last laugh. He just turns to the fish and he says, okay, you've had enough of this guy. And he, and he vomited him out onto dry land. That's pretty violent when you think about it. Because when you're vomited out from something, it, you feel slimy, you feel icky. Everyone kind of has that taste in their stomach, that taste in their nose, all the senses, it's not good. But the Lord redeemed Jonah because he at least put him on dry land. So he didn't make him swim for shore. And I thought that was pretty cool that he did that. And this was kind of interesting because this is God's creation. And the Papa Whale's talking to the little whale. He says there was a whale who didn't follow God's will, but he repented after God prepared a human for him and made him swallow it. <laughs> I mean, bummer as it is, uh, this is what happened. And uh, nature also has to take, uh, take the whole brunt of things. But one of the interesting things, then, is then we get back into Matthew, when we look at this compare and contrast. This is on Jesus' resurrection. There was a violent earthquake, so there was violence again. You know, this uh, throwing up is not a, a subtle thing, and a violent earthquake is not a subtle thing, as we know in California now. Um, but this violent earthquake happened, and then the angel of the Lord came down from heaven. And going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Talk about a redemption. Now that's a glory redemption. But God was doing this for his son, Jesus Christ. What God did for Jonah was what God does for us, man. And then what God did for Jesus was he, he brought them out in glory. He said the appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. This is redemption. And this is why we can trust Jesus to give us that redemption on the cross that he, he died for us. 
Jonah had his redemption. He was spit out on the dry land and probably got sandy and swarmy, and that's kind of how we are after we go through our pits. But God was redeemed in glory. And this, says, this is, this is kind of interesting because then Jonah probably had to go to Nineveh, but he had to go home first. And he, and he said, you know, okay, here, I'm home, honey. And she said, for crying out loud, Jonah, three days late, covered with slime and smelling like a fish. And what story do I have to swallow this time? <laughs> you know, he had, he had some pretty good material to work with when he went to Nineveh, I think. And I, I probably would have captured that too, you know. I, I'm sure I'm going to have to do that at some point in my life. <laughs> I'm going to have to deal with it. Um, but as Ned used to say, and always says, and still says, it's time to land the whale. Oh, he said plane. No, I said whale. It's time to land a whale. There are a couple themes that I'd like to go through uh, just to kind of capture some of the essence of what I was thinking about in getting ready for Jonah 2. Um, one is that God does provide. And again, He's our God. He is not going to let us down. He's going to be there in the good times and in the bad times. He's here right now in our presence. He's here to help us. And so we need to answer his call. We can repent. I mean, we do that every Sunday. We should do it every day. We should say, Father, forgive us for what we've done and for what we've left undone. You know, we're weak. You're strong. Help us out. And so we can repent, and that's, a, that's, that's what Jonah was going through, is this repentance. Although we don't always have to be in an icky fish to do it, we sometimes feel that we're in an icky fish trying to do that. And then we can avail to his call. We really should listen to what God has ready for us and be willing to lean into and step into God's will. And then finally, um, we are delivered. And we're delivered because Christ died on the cross for us. And he, he, uh, he gave us heaven. So again, Jonah, he was kicked off the boat by people that actually didn't want to boot him out. Jesus was put to the cross by people that were his own people that wanted him dead. Jonah spent three days and three nights. So did Jesus. Jonah was delivered to dry land by the vomiting fish, but Jesus was resurrected in glory. And then here's the part that we all know and love when we say God is good, we are good, and God is good. Thank God for that. And all God's people said, Amen. And now for the prayers of the church. That's Jim here. The prayer table is open for your prayers. And I'll say a couple of prayers. Anyone that wants to have anything verbally, come on up and, and share your wants and your needs, too. We haven't done that in our church much, but we can do that now if you have anything particular that you want our hearts and minds to be directed to. Father, thank you today for your word in Jonah and for your comparisons, but also for your love for us, that we can be delivered, that you're there to guide and keep us. You provide for us. You don't abandon us. Father, bless the people in California that have been in the midst of the earthquake and the cleanup. Be their God, too. Let them know that you haven't abandoned them that you're helping them. Father, bless our warriors overseas and at home, protecting us and keeping us safe. Bless our country. Bless the direction we go. Help our politicians to have sanity when they go against each other. Father, thank you for those that are needing healing time now, spiritually, physically. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessing of this church, for this family. Connie and I are particularly blessed to be a part of for all this time. This family will be missed by us, and you know in our hearts the direction that you're taking us. Help us to lean into that. And Heavenly Father, 
as we get ready now for part of our summer that everyone's going to be out and about, keep us safe. Keep us mindful of you and help us to praise you in our good times as well in our not so good times. Thank you, Lord, for all the opportunities that you're going to present to us. Help us to not run from them, but run to them. As we've seen time and time again in this community, people run to those they don't know. They run to help. Keep this community strong in your faith and strong in its actions towards others. We're going to be entering into our communion now. And the table is set for all who are here. Let us gather around the table with the offering of the bread and the drink upon it and the promise of living Christ among us. This is the welcome table of God where all who seek to be at peace with their neighbor and all who seek the mercy of God in Christ are embraced. Come, for we are invited to this holy mystery. Come. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took his authority as the Christ and offered the bread in thanksgiving and said, In the same way, and by the same authority, Jesus offered the cup of thanksgiving and said, your neighbor's hand. We're going to share together the prayer our Lord sent us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is ready. All are welcome. The communion is done by intention, so if our ushers will let people come forward, we'll take a piece of the bread and dip it in the wine, and then you can enter back to your seats this way. Ushers, please come forward. Communion helpers, please come forward. Standing on your God. 
May you live this day in abundance with compassionate, compassionate hearts, gentle words, gracious awareness, courageous thought, and generous love as we serve others through Christ. Amen. Please rise if you're able. today. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks.